Peace in Islam. Welcome. It's a late night chat. They hope I open some miscellaneous things that I ain't talk about in a minute because I've been doing a certain series dealing with something, but there's going to be some of the stuff that I've left out. So, uh, let's begin. So, right here we see a book called We Are All Moors. And I see people got a mental conflict with this statement. And I get that question asked to me a lot throughout the years. How are we all Moors? My easy answer is to say the same way that subconsciously something led us to believe that Anybody of our phenotypical stock, no matter where on earth, is known as blacks or Africans. That same subconscious mentality I had, and most likely people like this author had, and many others. So, after further research, again, like we just get out one day and realize, oh, we moors and trying to get everybody else to believe the same thing and we want to make a lot of cash apps or something like that and the only purpose is that we went and we researched and we realized something's being hidden some people got the courage to let that be known being that it, it will be an unpopular understanding the idea in these days and some people don't have the courage but this is why we're going to look into this question especially the American side so here's a map I understand of America around, let me see, we can look at this as 1600s, 1700s, and we see New Suelva, which is New Scotia, we see New England, and we see New France. Now, history showed us, and we gotta ask ourselves, how is this possible of the Europe, right? So we're gonna explain this. A short answer is, <laughs> these moors fall in the gods of Europe, being that on the map, this is part of Europe and Asia. But you get into newer versions of yourself. The ancient language is changing. The ancient customs changing. We amalgamating with Europeans on both sides. We doing business with, but the control of the world and the trade routes is your Moorish elders who still use the ancient ways, which is the Arabic and the Hebrew and the ways we govern and everything. But they ain't gonna turn you down, so you got treaties with these European nations because those are his children, the Moorish peoples, who the rest history books say been assimilated and married into and did business with France, England, Germany, and all those other places that the so called Indians, quote unquote, been a mix with. In the United States, no different. But where did they do? Where did they go to get these treaties and as they going to? where Morocco still stand late in the game and the head of this empire of trade the seats and the elders and they still using the ancient term Morocco and calling itself Moors based off the ancient understanding and uh, the assimilation been hard to get through to them but of course later that became Brazil but uh, we're going to go in deeper into this. 
And you see spin, do spin, going all the way down after the Kingdom of Fez. On the Spanish thing, you see New Granada. And then the cable verding up there. So. I might say 16 and 17 because he's, we already forming us and they talk about this in his three books in your classrooms, in your public classroom, public department of education. So, but at the same time, while this been here, the stove been here. You never had all our people follow the gods of Europe. We keep the ancient way of our ancient foremothers and forefathers. For a long time again united states still had to deal with the elders and again these malls who've been all over the world and north south all over just got different customs and languages over time <coughs> but we see right here it's from this book where they believe they got still had atlantis in the middle or at least the ancient empires have been set up because they find the evidence of that. And uh, you see it right by the in the Mississippi cultures. And you see New Spain down in Peru. And you see where Morocco at that river right there, Amazon. That's where the Sharif always set up because he can control most of his empire, the Moorish, and all his people from there. So history of the so-called blacks or african-american or any millions or other terms that we used to call all our tribes with different names all our family names all our personal names may be different all is different but this is an empire and it had one name that we can go forward and back in time but even if we're going back to the ancient empire of egypt we know the lords and the rulers had many different terms that dealt with what became the term more and moorish and that's everywhere that's why the word is in everybody's dictionary because we're dealing with empire just like rome the influence of the latin not only the roman but you know you had the carthaginians and the punics who had a different form of the latin so you know, with empires, not just our tribe and our localization mentality. So that's why we see we all are more because we're dealing with this research. And again, if you break it up, then that's when you're going to be losing because the Europeans ain't breaking nothing up. The British Empire is everywhere people speak English and they mind. And that's everywhere on the planet. So they're claiming it. So that's another understanding. That I done myself to show how the world looked at the world. So you got the islands of the Indies. You see, is in the same bracket with India and plenty other places, right? And that's where Africa begins in mentality because of a because of climate. So you see, in North Africa today. This is called North Africa. <laughs> this is called Sub Saharan. This is called Sub Africa. That because that oil map will trickle down on that continent and disappear in the rest of the world. But you can see the green part known as Asia. Asia, you see it was Asia. The, the dark green part is Frigida. Uh, what they call the Nordic states, which is the Slavic states. And um, that's how I've been looking. So you see, even at the bottom, you see it get back to based off climate. And all these sections had different names and times, but and changing to the different over time these more borders and more borders it become then because people breaking up into multiple forms of themselves so the farther you go back the less borders the world will have so you're talking about empire people who certain sciences that they keep 
in order to keep the empire from falling and it's simple sciences and we and we got it <clears throat> the ancient ancestors who kept control of this been high nobles going back to the first empires and beyond <laughs> And they call that Phoenici or Phoenician because of this man here, you know, they set up in that section of the Mediterranean going all the way across. So they get their name and books. And when they use these names and books, it's, they going to try to make like they talk about modern day things like Jerusalem, Judean kingdoms, and Egypt, and Africa. Those terms means big sections and jurisdictions, and even like this and mentality. So we see, even today we can't deny that products get everywhere. People acting like Walmart and take control of this empire and these corporations going straight through these trade routes that were set up by the, by the ancestors, your ancestors, your empire, continuation, and more so benefiting in all kind of ways from this and still running this especially the wars in, wars in Africa got part of these big international corporations got Moors here who was super wealthy and shit and you got many Moors who got stocks and a lot of so they merchants they stole into it but you under a uh, economic system a European Roman economic system Instead of control of it, and the max fact that you printing the money and all that too, but we see the trade routes and never stop being used around the world. And you see, they're still going around the Cape of Good Hope into this part that been going on in the ancient world. Ain't nothing new. You see, Asia definitely coming into North America through this top because in the world, it's easier for them to travel through. They on land and get to to the waters and travel out. This might look long because the map flatten out by a short distances. And with Spain going, with Portugal and Spain going right where the wind would take with the best route, and that's where the first spot in New Granada. other routes and like a Brazil I go to Moors from right there they definitely are the same they put that script to Morocco too from around Morocco to the new they ain't even hide that in this because they ain't supposed to they don't know why you're looking for you're looking for this something different there's exports and imports of cereals different types of wheats now what Jolly say once the Moors felt um, fed the entire world and they're going to have to do it again one day so you pay <laughs> so you got different frames of thought you got people who are diffusionists and they believe that the world been had contacts pre colonial looking to a good bit of this and they got theories that the Columbus shit is fake and the world had this going on and never broke up and never created because Europeans figured out how to do the shit. Our own ancient empire has been trading like this. It started off with South Circle 7, gave us the whole breakdown. The ancient empire of Egypt. And it break up into other things over time. More borders. And then you got people like this. You got a bunch of website people talking about these same things. They like to call him a crock pot. I like they right, right here, crack pot. This website right here, if you want to look at propaganda, go ahead. They the worst. Propaganda, everything that wrong. You want to see what they want people to know and what they want to hide. Go ahead and read about history. <laughs>
and reconstructing this to this day. So you, you probably heard of these crackpot theories. So everything that don't go against what they want people to know is a crackpot theory. So they try to tell everybody don't listen to them off top. So that means they try to make you dismiss knowledge. So we're gonna read this before we get into this. This right here would be crack pop, but this from something the Smithsonian and the lab published in the Library of Congress. So they could be crack boss today <laughs> from a federal depository of New York State and Handbook of North American Indians, page 290, United States Government Print Office. It states that among the reputed ancestors of the Aboriginal American Indian, so you see already population natives. So you already use terms that don't connect to no treaties, no ancient empire, no not and no words that connect to none of these things. So they scripting you of your rights, your birth rights, of these ports, these gold mines, of them, every trade route, and all these things that the Emperor of Morocco control not the emperor of aboriginal or the emperor of american or the emperor of indian or not these other terms these terms that designate things in certain perspective aboriginal could be anybody aboriginal to what american is a continent the name of the continent or you can deal with the the only two theories you can, that exist really is the fact that the natives had a term called American and different spellings and it became the American version that we see on the screen. Or you got three theories or you got what we'll more say is al Moroccan in a different form. al Americanos, like the treaty say. Or Los Mar Maracanas, which is a tribe here, or you can see the third option is the official narrative that a guy named Amerigo Vespus used name the place and now, so now the ancestors, they want you to use his name like a slave. So if you believe that, then I wouldn't use that term if that's true to you. But you got theories, different theories. Ain't nobody got the time machine to go back and see, oh, mine's real and the rest of the theory's fake. Nope. Everybody got a claim and evidence going to prove your claim. And again, and then another term that got dubious meanings. Basically, the official narrative say that's what Columbus mistakenly named them. So that means dying them and it don't connect to no empires because I am real. And then there's another ambiguous term that is saying somebody native to a certain place and then they say they are Moors and Turk so even this read two or three ways because they say among so try to say these people who they call an Aboriginal American Indian population natives are somebody different and they're a group of people who here with them called Moors and Turk or people who are Moors and Turks are also Aboriginal American Indian populations and natives to this place. One of those two things in that statement. We want to be honest. <laughs> so here's our incantation before we begin our talisman, Islam. To the future generations of Moorish Americans, guard thee well with this knowledge. And in turn, it shall serve thee and thy progeny. And then basically, that's why most Moors really publish information like make videos and stuff too because they understand that they gotta teach their own future the truth or they be at the one of somebody else narrative and then they be enslaved and lack of knowledge so we got the right like anybody else to teach our own children and these videos I almost had them on private and I'm gonna keep the links and our family records for our future gonna have 
they host the ring attack, they gonna know who I is, and then they will be recording videos, recording who they is, and so on and so on. If generation, the eighth dynasty, they know who they is, they ain't gonna lose that. So that's a record, recording videos. But I've been asked to open it to everybody, so I did it. So anyway, thy progeny in the glorious days to come, be ye faithful to one another and forsake not thy nation's blood for foreign covenants and strange gods and whatever form they may appear. Know that in the mind we are with thee always, which is our ancestors who leave documents and records and stuff for us today. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. Always with us and will always be with us when we leave because we leave in these, these time travel documents. Alut. Protegis ac doctoris. Allah protect and the guide. And guide thee. And again, if we want to deal with these terms like this and act like this right here, don't it's just like you see people disavowing us every day, people who we call more. They say, brother, even though you got the such and such tribe of the American thing, we try to give you an understanding that. Yeah, you got control and power worldwide. And these are the people who related to a lot of people in the world. They ain't just been sitting in teepees smoking fucking damn tobacco until Columbus come and civilized them. People are going to question you in these things. They're going to say, I understand you a Cherokee or what, but who are you? Because you got two you got two options. Either you've been sitting here with no civilization or nothing like that. And the crackpot theories, <laughs> or you had a world empire. But again, like we always say, if that Columbus theory is true, then we should see so many things up and down the continent that don't connect to nothing languages, customs, and everything. We don't see that. We see everything we find over here, we can find a connection some kind of way to some way on the other hemisphere. We absurd to think that only one part of the world been connected until the Spaniards, 1492. And then all of a sudden the day all these routes exist. But they want you to believe only this trade exists because ain't nobody know about the other half of the fucking planet. So when you're coming with these things, it's just to hide this, it's to hide that fact. Those keywords to hide that fact, but this way he's telling you, they have to tell the truth, because they find too much evidence that they are them, just in the ways. Just the circle seven, again he bring you the ancient empire and all the best customs and ways and knowledge and science and the history within this. And everything after he put this together, everything that deal with American history just prove him more right and right and right. <laughs> From the time he put it together till now, he will continue to find more evidence of this truth. So what I want to see you see the holy instruction and warning for young men, marriage instruction for man and woman, and man and wife, duty of a husband, holy instruction for children. So what he doing is taking people who call themselves blacks and stuff and making ancient Moorish kings out of them. The way these kings, the only way you can have an empire stand that long and have a golden age if you're dealing with certain principles. And if you away from those principles, you're gonna fall. That's how you fall, because you go away from those certain principles and start falling the gods of Europe and doing weird shit. <laughs> and they keep trying to take you away from these principles because they know it and try to give it to their children. So all these things, social duties, justice, how we look at rich and poor, which is finance, understanding spiritually, obedience our children's toward the father. See these things that we don't take for granted no more. It might seem like simple things, and you got some people who always gonna have these principles, no matter what you need him to tell them, but he talking to the entire Moorish King, empire of the world by really the ones closer to him. It's the Moors in America. He was born. 
and destruction and unity. All these things we're seeing, why we can't unite, why we can't uh, he put all this down, all we had to do was give this to our children, they would grow up with this in them, probably walk around with the hills again. <laughs> the master and servant, how we look at that, which is basically saying how we serve our people, we serve our nation, each other, and our mothers and our fathers, we serve them. So we can look at how that, instead of being a one world, I ain't slave to nobody, we ain't really you coming from a different point of view. Magistrate and subject, another example of that. How we respect the magistrates and the judges and the emperors and things that we all serve because we won't keep the empire rolling. We won't, we ain't won't be the ones who, no, I want to be the emperor. No, I want to be the emperor. No, we keep order and we all come together and we choose the most person for that position, the elder who we all serve. In. So he had to get us back in that because our minds stay not switched for that. We can't see ourselves serving each other instead of hating on each other. And social duties, justice, charity, gratitude, sincerity, religion, know thyself, breath of heaven, the soul of man, the pinnacle of wisdom, the instability of man, inconsistency, weakness, the insufficiency of knowledge. And that's why we explaining about uh, how knowing things and how we think we know things that we cause conflict with one another because no, that's what happened, no, that's what happened. If we really sit down and think about it, do we really know? If we really think about it, hell no, you ain't know my friend. You ain't know what happened in the club last in the last two weeks of actually explain that to me. You're going to have aspects of what happened, but you ain't going to be able to be able to explain it to me. Like, perfectly what happened two months ago at that club. And I asked somebody else in the club, they would give me a whole different story because that comes from their perspective. So is those two people wrong? Am I right or is wrong? No. So we got to understand knowledge is we got to know these type of things so we'll be able to discuss. We can't govern if we don't even know how to discuss things without fighting. It should cause a conflict. So the prophet inconsistency, weakness, insufficiency of knowledge, misery how to deal with these things within ourselves he always brought yourselves he gave us the divine origin of the Asiatic nation he gave us how we should look at our beginnings the creation of the fall of man so we don't have to be worried about Darwin and somebody else putting other influences on us he gave us this, um, the beginnings of Christianity because he know we're dealing with that so he gave us the truth about that he gave us the uh, divine origin of the Asiatic nations, which is historically as you can use as nations binding because gens, gens again means race and race gens is the beginning of Genesis or Genesis. There ain't no black, white, none of that in that. So we got Egypt, the capital empire, the main of Africa, which is the beginning of civilization as we put it. Because he's where the people got the treaties and the people who already got the the port set up and the trade going. That we can go back always again before that. But we don't need to go back before that. The claim is perfect with the chapter 48. Chapter 47 really, or 8. So you ask the history so we ain't got to be taking anybody else's history if it ain't come from the Moors, which is this right here that we put our faith in. And again, throughout time, everybody saying that's what it is. You got plenty of videos of these people saying, well, Egypt must be in the West because they find this and this, that, this and that, this and that. <laughs> yep, you already know so everybody. And everybody just keep getting stronger and stronger evidence. And then he just drop it in us because he ain't been selfish. He ain't been like, well, this my tribe and this our people and, and y'all is something else over there. I know he been talking about all us, the young Mo who on the street and everybody telling him he a slave and all this and try to tell him his history and he ain't got none of the sciences that'll make him a better person and worthy, most praiseworthy. That's the most praiseworthy large right here, the Mohammedan. And his history and, and how to be. If he ain't getting that in his house, he got the circle seven. 
So that man was thinking about, again, time traveling. How I can help me, the most here to deal with me, and thousands of years. So he put him in English for him. Because he know that's what we on. And we still on. But this Islam, this my art, this the Orisha science, this all that is in English form. All those things got meaning if you translate them and break them down to the common denominator, coming to these, these common denominator into these ancient sciences, the civilizations, the mothers and fathers of civilizations. And then we got this right here, we show you. A lot of things showing that it's a Western Empire and they give you that DNA test and they want to pick everybody over here who are the Moors, who dark skin as Afro-Americans. But that's, okay, that's fine. They're the ancient people who set up everything and they come from the West, but you can't. They come, they've been in the West longer than we know. And in the things that they're saying, we sub-Saharan African, cool. Those people and us over here, who you calling that, is this people, these Moors, <laughs> who he talking about. They, they part of that family too. And that's why, that's how we know that, you see. The Onanians were a member of the Caspian population. There were continuity, there was continuity between the populations in the Maghreb, the West, and Southern Sahara, just like all the Moors in the West, what they say. They try to say that about us, but they don't realize that that just making us the ancient ones from the ancient world, because we can see that through the research. So he said, Southern Sahara, Sub Saharan, referred to as the Capsian Ibero Marusian, because they were all over the Atlantic, and the language showing us that the Mectoids, the Niger Congo speakers, other descendants of the are the descendants of the Capsian population, which again, all these on both sides of the ocean, Moorish Empire. <laughs> Capsian people did not only live in Africa, they also are present in Asia, all across that line, like I showed you at the beginning. You see, Southern India, Indus Valley, all those Moorish empires. And we've seen it anciently right here. Uh, Lahovri and Sastri maintain that the Capsian population was unified over a extension zone from Africa across Eurasia into southern India. Some researchers maintain that the Capsian civilization originated in East Africa. The Onanian culture is associated with sites in Central Egypt, Algeria, Mali, Mauritania, and Niger. Going right, like again, proving no drawly right. The Onanian tradition is probably associated with the Niger Congo, so connecting that ancient Moorish Empire with the rest of Africa. This would explain the close relationship between the Niger Congo and the Nilo Saharan languages. So, linguistic studies. The original homeland of the Niger Congo speakers were probably situated in the Saharan highlands during the Onayan period from the here in sea population migrating to the Faison, Nile Valley, and Sudan. In summary, the Niger Congo speakers formerly lived in the highland regions of the Faison and Hogar until. 14, 4000 BC. So, let's see. Among the Proto Saharans, the name Ma'a, like Maya, uh, Mauritania, all these terms stole in the great Ma. <laughs> but they say, for their great ancestor, God was joined to many ethnonyms, to many ethnonyms, names, place names, people names. The descendants of the Ma clan claim the same from Ma. As evident in the name Mande, from the parent group of the Mandane of West Africa, Mande meaning Mandade, or children of Ma, and you know that be like Mu too, or Mo, because the vowels ain't really been important. It has been dialects. Some Dravidian of South India were also members of the Mande Super Clan, also in the street in the Kannada, Telugu, Tulu. Um, the Freudian tribe that use the term Mande or Mandi, you see how the vowel change to denote people or persons. The Sumerians call themselves Magari, let me see, Magari, God's exalted children. And so, you see, not only the ancient Egyptians, we got this M more or Ma 
the pro to Sahara in honor of the great Ma. It was a term Ma to denote greatness. For example, Made, Maga, Sumerian, Mag, Sajabian, Ma, and you see Maga over time. Some people are right pronouncing Naga on another part of the world. The Ma element we are to use in the name of their rulers, Menes of Egypt, the Manan of the Jibrilian, and the Mansa of the Manding, Ma'a'ites, Ma'a'ites, yeah, Ma'a'ites, Ma'a'ites, cultivated mullets, processed domestic cattle, sheep, goats, civilization, father, and Ma, the Ma'a'ites built pyramids that we see everywhere, and a large monument that are writing in which is called the Night. And the night pottery shows that in these studies, uh, Clyde went the first sibilic writing system in the world was the African Dynite script. So that's the earliest empire we got linguistically you can find. And we just finished reading about the empires. This writing was the used first by Africans in the upper Happy River Valley. This is exact place where the ancient Kemite city ancestors came from, the Great Lakes region, like the, like the Great Lakes in the, over here too, right, of Central and Southeast Africa. These African migrated out of this region to the rest of the continent and brought their writing with them. The most diverse form of African writing can be found in West Africa. So we go to West Africa, we find ancient stuff, and then yeah, we go in all over the world and find ancient stuff about ourselves over here because it's been a worldwide system shaked in 1492 slurry and again if this is the oldest then of course all the people all the moles over here they're gonna, they're gonna call it sub saharan africa that could be a high percentage because they finding somewhere else in the world other than you matching your blood to and yeah of course I've been our people over there too that's been the ancient world the rubber coming out of Brazil going right into the Niger the ancient trade routes and Morocco right there you see proto Sahara pyramids and Sphinx we find rocks like this that look like Sphinx in America. You see they represent Amman, means the Westerners. And we still say Amen over here. <laughs> Same little type of lions and stuff that we see in Andalusian all over the world, little statues. Ancient. Mm -hmm. The female god of the Ma'ais were Ama or Aman. The goddess Hathor, dealing with the horns, all that's connected. So everybody coming, they just proving over Charlie right over and over. Instead of getting to, if he right there, got that my thing, we ain't gonna just say, okay, let's, let's look into this thing. So you got people who want to disavow that. The only turn they want to disavow is the morals. Everybody. They're going to be talking about any other history. They're going to make sure they stop and say, well, the morals does something to them or whatever. Bring out us and shit. you dealing with the language. God, I'm on. I'm in. I'm on different files. You see other gods, Seth and Anubis. Don't forget these more come from West. He connected to West Africa, but if you look at his other books, he realized that that shit far west. And he started writing about that. And that's when they want to disavow him and hide his information because he started to connect both sides. They don't want that. Columbus got to do that. And you see, Libico Berber. That's why they call you the ancient Berber because they know this too. to a kana <laughs> so 
So you always say, you see more, say, yeah, I get a DNA test. I said, give me a lot of Moorish blood. So I got a lot of ancient Moorish blood. Cause uh, we know they calling it one thing. We know they ain't, they ain't us. And doing no study into this shit to know exactly what I named that particular group of people who they find all over the American continent and all over Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and all over the world. Cause every time of a dark skin dude come from France and he move here, he can just take a DNA test, he gonna get Sub-Saharan Africa. They naming these ancient bloodlines. One group of people in the world there cause they want all us to go there. Get out they field. And he fall, we falling for that. So we see common searches. That's why you confusing kids. <laughs> no jolly can't get in the truth. He ain't getting this confusion shit. So Native America's a term that ain't a group of people. No way in history. That's just saying you native to the continent called America. And that's a lot of different people. But you see over time, we penetrate Google with some of us. <laughs> you see right there. But again, these people, they chill in some way. And you got stole a lot of they own people, malls, like Lobo Jolly. You get everybody that he ain't just keep that he he the boss and he going to out some way and, and benefit. You get everybody through all the more a chance. But these people they ain't with nobody know them. You got a lot of malls around this thing, calling yourself black, dealing with wrong. They gonna just leave them there and act like they been on these moors here and get the casino and shit. They ain't got time for that. And they ain't disavow the term more like they know. And we say, hey, y'all other moors you're talking about. These people is not genetically separated from us. And then when you let United States tell this story, they the ones who run off the slave plantations and get saved by these people. And now they end this today. That's the story they want us to believe if we decide to go their route with it. Got time to play with these people. And again, that's who, when Columbus come here, that's the, the palace that they set them up in when they receive him. And it's a Moorish palace, so that means these Native Americans been more spoiling stuff like this and overseas and here. No different architecture than both sides of the Atlantic, they receive him, put him in there. Again, we do the same thing with Moors, the young Moor, who in the project, who ain't got the luxury to get a casino. At least he get to see people who look like him, ain't got some kind of nobility and all the damn slave. And you see, we are all Moors, we know, worldwide, this word been the word they be using. We be using and they be using the nobles of other nations who've been smart enough to know who these people been. They get to see their visuals. When you put a Native American, you can see this visual. And then you see. <coughs> this right here, they want to make foreign to America because they want to cut this off. It's not going to work. <laughs> And I know what y'all at least show up when you put them on. That's how it's supposed to be. Now look how he dressed. I'm gonna start to see this a lot everywhere. He dressed like his ancestors. <laughs> and American one too. And Moses too, I can show you. A European version of Moses. And say, look, he got the same thing the world Charlie had on that picture. <laughs> so yeah, I did this uh, and then, of course, you got some with more Wikipedia. It's the first, but you're gonna pop up because they about propaganda. And they don't want these people to know they more. They want them to keep being blacks and Africans. And any other term that they call themselves, but not Moors. As long as they ain't that. Like, but then black and more Indians. And you got many museums who use in this term black and more. So all these foreign, because that term, or that's a way that they hide the Moorish history. Just like we speak in French, English, 
Spanish and all these things now in America and Africa we've been speaking these languages and we've been writing dictionaries in these languages and a lot I'm defining more as a dark skinned person and I've been a dark skinned person right there we just assuming that we ain't had no knowledge and not like that because we thinking that we've been sitting around we've been we, we connecting ourselves with different histories you know, we won't say more is foreign, but they won't act like, okay, they have that the case, they ain't, you taking all this history for granted. That's the history, this ain't got to do with you. And again, you can try to penetrate them, they still going to flip them as you right against them and mix with them. And you got to believe all the other stories, the African slave trade and everything, if you want to deal with the Columbus, or the Moors is foreign, they come with foreigners. And I seen that because somebody just said that recently on a show that getting thousands of views. And they always got to stop and say things like that for whatever reason. Erroneous as hell. So again, all these foreign, <laughs> are they just calling them black or Mars? But they ain't just calling them Indians. They think that's what they got to be, huh? You gotta connect mentally to that. And again, it's like these people, they gotta look the part, right? They can't just be a brother in the hood with that history, but he don't look the part, but history gotta look the part or he ain't down. They want to survive to turn them on now. You can see, light bringers, that's why they lap. Hold this little lamp and these shit. No, this one right here, you see. Foggy dress where you see that red keep hanging off. We're gonna look at that today. You can see. Different ways and parts of the world. And they put this one in there. It's just like he and Early America, Mexico, 1800, 1700, you can find plenty. But if the skin too dark, he gotta be a foreign more. But then you can find plenty pale skin. People paint with that same outfit type custom. Exactly the same. They can be from Mexico now in the caption. All illusions. So then, I better than us. They're gonna be free and see. They're gonna be fancy. So, you know, we penetrate this and we write our own things about this using this term, write books, make websites, and stuff like that. So, these will come out, creating our own narrative. But what we saying is that we calling these people more, somebody else can call them this. That means we wrong. Or that means you wrong. <laughs> If you want to call them that. But we ain't the people who separate in us. We still can deal with anybody who calls himself these things. We just saying we ain't not, ain't that we ain't different. We like truly blood. Like they can make it look like we ain't the same people genetically because we're using different terms. That's ridiculous. Let me see a depiction of Pocahontas and how she dressed she ain't dressed like this so she foreign too a foreign more a foreign Indian a Spanish Indian all the northern parts like we showed you at the beginning is a extension going all the way across of your empire including what we call Europe English Victorian, which is like the Spanish, same type of little outfit. All uh, like type of European, we'll be calling these things. But again, we're talking about uh, Moorish Empire of the world. Even Europe and all those things before we delineate the world, the ancient empire of Egypt, that was just North Egypt, and the rest of the world was South Egypt. Because the trade routes ran through the whole world, it fed the world. On our maps, North Africa and South Africa. Going all the way across. We became Europe. 
but like I say, far on the Gaza Europe, on both sides too. <laughs> Why that northeastern side been connected with the French and all these other European countries in the beginning of this thing? So we see right here, we see ones who people want to call Indian on the same thing. You see the ones, and he bowed them. <laughs> they say that's the one they tell you. Her story is. He get discovered. He get civilized. So you can see how they line about that for you, about you. We, because you find in these paintings when they look like dress like this. Dime even been the kids. You been this that free. It ain't been nobody bothering in these hard areas. So, but you still work with your cousins, who've been sealing different parts of the world. The climate's different. Or your brother in the village, the people who deeper in the interior, who are the part women like this, and the ones who us their family out their same household, your uncles and your cousins, and not everybody gonna leave and be merchants, and be by some of them was they had they had not a right papyrus and all this other shit that the world the other side of the world did, it's just like this. You know, I know science and math too, but you see on this side. Where they want cut off, act like they want disavow. That's what, what we would consider a Arab hormone. The turban and the fez and the long gowns. Like the Eastern people. So we know Columbus and Scott was shit. Both all these people are advanced. They discussing some shit. <laughs> Pulling a castle or some shit. I fucked. Mathematically. See Tierra Fremi or the New Kingdom of Granada or Papian. All that the same thing. Different people calling different things. But you can see they've been the same most from over here, what we call them foreign. The Americans, Moorish Americans. Don't let the way they trans food. And this right here showing you this. He in the same pit with them and he civilized already. He ain't Columbus and all these people. Again, they see the people who they say on the story, the first one to talk about Nino, the pilot, and say he been dark skinned, he been African and all that. So they gonna say, Oh, that the more there ain't no other the moors over here now. So he mean no other dark skinned people in the fields. They been calling it so black Indian or something. Waiting for foreign most of the time with Europeans but if you take that part of the story again you gotta take the whole thing you can't say well Europeans lie about us being savages in the woods with no knowledge you can't act like that too now and then see take that that the more foreign that the Europeans we telling you that's what they say about us and that's what happened earlier today on one of them calls do be like one of the dudes that more for me, who been saying, and I get, and even no boy, he even no more who call himself more. He calls himself something else. But <laughs> like you see, talking to the the one from Liberia, and that's why the confusion is it's widespread amongst us. He said, "We go on there and we civilize the Africans when we set up Liberia. They, this he saying they ain't been civilized like." They had to go teach them math, science, history, all these other things. Basically saying they were wild people in the forest. But dying, how you going down? He ain't much been the, uh, like the tribes where they let them come and been happy. Oh, look, our African brothers coming back and none of that shit real. We call none of that shit like with science, like how a European con did it. See that? See it on that Liberian mission, but. Man, man, but like, well, you can't be like we've been, we've been uncivilized, and you um, civilized us. Cause I can come back and say the same thing. Well, according to the story, Columbus and Britain and France come over here and civilized the wild Indians, black. Oh, no matter what. <laughs> or you ain't much been in America, and they bring you to America, civilize you. Then you come back and civilize them. If you want to say that. Then take the whole story, false narrative. You want you spout false narrative about us. He been rapping us Liberian, indigenous people, but he from Cali. But he still been saying we can't be 
using these low Roman reconstructive version of other people and they act like they lie about us only. We got our mind state disconnected from our ancient empire. That's why we got these things. Put to have your own timeline going back thousands of years and don't even, you can have similars with the official narrative. You're going to have similar with the official narrative, but totally your way. So we see again in America, we see just like in West Africa and almost every desert in the world, they have the same customs. Again, it's like how I show you how to map of the world, but you got Friggy there at the top as one place. Then you got Europe going all the way across. They call us different things Europe, Asia, and throughout time. You see Africa, but just the north part, Africa. And then the rest of it be either Peru. So they know you're talking about going all the way across. Perusta or Ethiopus. And they're going all the way across and even got a big ass river right there because they ain't really know how you look. But our map been like this. That's where they copy this shit from. You see, Perusta is what Africa is called today. So that's another name. And it's called Temperata Antipodum. Antipodum. Which is not a name of a place. They're just telling you what the climate is. Perusta, Africa, Europa, Frigida, all those ain't really empires like that. Those names were set up the smaller ones really as the India, Ethiopius, and Galius. But these sections of the world, Europa, and all these again go all the way across. You just don't see it in these. Again, we see Venezuela, which is New Andalusia, and we see all the islands. They didn't much talk about these islands no more. They come all the way down. We see Saint Lucia, Grenada, come all the way down. Paria, another word that is like a far here. Yeah. And again, you want to take one part of us, we take all. It was the Spanish. And we can assume that these Indians are, like we see in our timeline, these Moorish Americans. Probably want to blame Moorish America for bringing Columbus over here. We're going to show you. Just the Spanish and the Indians. And you hold an umbrella of the Queen and our noble on the Spanish side. They kind of do business with the nobles on this side. And then that, and that's you. So, the Nino brother bringing Columbus over here is a moot point. They always point fingers. When you point fingers in the street, you're always going to end up pointing back to you. And you ain't want to point to nobody else because the only person who had the power for you to rise or fall is you in your own ways. You won't fall if you don't follow your ways and love each other and be together. And that's simple. So again, you see, different languages, it's tough change. You see, a Baruvian, not her. Beru, honor. But it's Peruvian in English, but that's a different German type English, old English. We see this painting. We see this picture, super Peruvian. And again, this picture, African, all of a sudden. But man, got the same stance and everything. To Could be different person, but this, but they got the same customs all across this this little group, right? Here, the tribal moors. Where they gonna definitely hide? Cause they ain't a typical Indian. So you gotta be, you gotta find these type of things. They can teach nobody this type of shit. But we find things like this, say a Peruvian. And then we find things like this, they can say an African. We supposed to be, now we confused because this shit is just, just like the fucking Peruvian. But again, Peruvian go all the way across, or so again, that's gonna be African. But then, again, you saying that these maps, you saying these maps are all right. 
in Africa, we talk about squares all the way across on the America side. Break everything down to the common denominator because people will make these statements and leave it like that. Knowing thousands of people listening who ain't got knowledge of self for the first time, and listening to these things coming up, you really confuse them. Especially when you use the term more and they say something in a erroneous or uh, negative demonization, right? Like a Roman would do. For the because you know these people are moors and these millions of them, and you won't make sure you demonize that. So every time they see that, they ain't gonna look deeper into it. Hiding this shit. Let me see. This is a depiction of the moors. What they gonna see us moors? Cause I they looking at camels and shit. And on the same painting. So you're gonna see the Americans, right? And uh, we're gonna see this right here all over the world, especially America, this certain little umbrella. Look how he dressed, different. But you see, you got the Magi, which is majesty, it's a symbol of majesty, our nobility, our knowledge. High knowledge in the time period where the master said he really got it. The Moors got it. That's the full pen. They showing Roman domination over the world in this pen. And you see Moors littered throughout this whole pen in different parts of the world. And then people who got this pen know they more, just like we know. And they gonna be the ones who hide them, and they gonna be a bunch of black homies hiding them with them. That's a vow in it, demonizing it, marginalizing it. I'm saying all kind of shit. We see the dust schools, 17th century, which is the 1600s, allegory of the abundance of the Americas, the continent, represented in allegorical, which is a Moorish woman. Not the people I search for when I search for Native Americans. The people I search for when I search for Moors. That's the allegorical of America. What a flag. Showing nationality and civilization. Rebutting the shit out of them boy history. I was on that same painting. Cause they got the gods of Europe over them too. Start calling themselves all these other things. European domination. As you can see in this, we see Mount the Turban on right there again. We see two different types. You got the little robe. You see what the feathers, of course, is the Florida. You see what the gator. He representing the most of the South with allegorical. When you see that robe, he can button that up. And now you got like a toga. So now he can become a European more if he take a picture with the shirt off. See how ignorant we be? <laughs> like this man's supposed to be look like this. And that will make him fit the story that they talking about black indian but when you put them on now you fit another whole story i don't make no sense from a white coat that's your mentality like my man back they got hers on zip out with the collar he doing the business he he the key the boss he the moroccan something because he chilling and he hard as hell in that plaza and ain't no europeans getting deep in there he chilling the cot with the rest of the do what we call it, the natives. Woman, breasts out and everything because they ain't got to worry about Europeans and nothing. You see, you got minted gold, minted in circles and shit like that on him. He put his coat on when he going to Lisbon and shit too. But he got his nephew being the middleman ambassador of the empire and shit like that. Why he gonna go? <laughs> And they got many chiefs and stuff on this empire. You see them back there, they got clothes on, shirts on and shit. That's an illusion. We see the Turk, Moors and Turk. They got the Turk all too. do. That's what they call Turk in the history books. We need to search for that. And it's America now. Red, drawn in Rome, the allegorical. All this allegorical for different things. And they worldwide, they understand the world and the empire. Chapter 48 is 
that's it showing you that <laughs> in a new version but we don't care about the new version we see they still put the same aspects in it but man with the color back then again yeah. we can see a little bit more shit they see like a magi back there a wizard <laughs> the Turks though the same they have to change that though but they changed everybody else but that boy put the more in stone you can tell you like he got the hair afro and shit Lighting everybody else up. So they wanna play these games and hide them more and shit just like everybody else. They hide them by lighting up pictures cause no they know more as a more the dark skin person no matter where they really at. And I connect him to the land no matter where he at. <laughs> Stuff like this, name different things. They can't really name this an African picture because these people are in the picture. And that's who they want us to think that is the ones over here. So they will try to make them like, oh yeah, a few Africans made it over here. Yeah, they been over here and they had made women of all different parts of the world here too. Making children and do shit like that too for thousands of years. See the allegorical, the feathers, and the born out, they putting the baby hand and shit. A lot of this is allegorical things they put in there to represent the trade, what nobles know. And again, Knights of Christ and all that puts truth and hidden and stuff like this for the initiate and the hide things from the masses. <laughs> like you see. See the parrot, which made the Amazon. You see the moles got the, the the headband. It's like we see in Sardinia, Afro Moorish features, and we see the Patagonian blondes all around the gods of Europe. You see the European woman, just like CNBC, a thousand years, one thousand six hundred seven years of Moorish American men and Patagonian blonde women. He blame himself, he ain't point nobody else, he show us the truth. Mix and create a whole lot of these races what people call themselves today. And that been in America. And you could tie all the way down. And again, other painting in the room showing some allegorical versions of that story. But they're gonna say he ain't know what he's talking about seeing B because he calls himself a B in 1960s and 70s rain about this history. You see people like this all the time. You see these things say he's black Indian because he's dark skin and he got the different shit. But if he was about 1492 and all that, who teaching both? How the hell he, get, he didn't know how to create weapons like in Europe, swords and shit. The sword don't look no different than thing. And he got the fur on it. I didn't know how to do all that. So he part of the fur trade and all that little bandana and everything. So you got these people malls, they had different phenotypes and shit too. <clears throat> so we see that's what the United States gonna call everybody and this what they say all that mean. So that's why you see some more say, yeah, if you ain't want to use the term, well, at least use American Indian, because at least they saying things like, in law, you ain't going to be caught out really. They saying a person having origins in any of the original peoples of North America, that's ambiguous. Moors are, have origin as the original peoples of North America. But that define, that's how they define American Indian. Not no other terms we use, just that in that order because they know they gotta do that because the record books. Most McCartney's of that late, so the record books reflect those free morals and say American Indians who enamored with this government. <laughs> and they know most can use those <coughs> and treaties that they did later with the British after the breakup of the empires. 
and also the treaties that England, the empires, the Rome and most that to deal with the Americas, our treaties. Because that's, <laughs> that's what you talk about when they say originals, people of the Americas. And then you see how they separate and everything. And black, see a person having origins in any of the black racial groups of Africa, and I don't explain this before. Black racial groups is different from saying original peoples in law because race can mean a race of bugs or birds. They use the word race legally in lexicons, not just for humans or peoples. You don't they don't use the term people for ants, they use they don't use that for ants. So they only use the term people for human beings. So the term peoples should be in that definition. But they know black don't mean nothing, so they ain't have to really do that. So black racial groups of Africa, which don't exist, it could mean anything. Um, black groups, racial groups of turtles. <laughs> so they denationalize you and displace you if you use that. So now you stuck in a person again, the young more who just in the States, they ain't got no casinos, they ain't got nobody got people telling them they black and African. They gotta scrap, they gotta suffer because that's what it is. While people have casinos trying to be something else. That man bring them back and get them out of this and put them in a proper understanding, a situation that more proper than this shit, right? Here. The United States know that. That's why they call themselves so certain things try to connect to the moral shit. Why they got fears and shit. That's for the people on the ground. <laughs> Not the people who got control of this shit. And again, that's how they think of you and your indigenous self. <laughs> Where the morals at? They're telling you these people who out here now, you ain't around, other people, us, the indigenous. You less than 2% down here, you black people. That's what they're saying. So we don't care about what they're saying. We don't even care about none of these terms, none of you. Now what they say, we the Marge Empire in our history. Going back a thousand years and brass up to the day. Unbroken. And we didn't care who recognized that it's true or not. We recognize them ourselves and the more that do, the better off we gonna be. Our solidarity. And there's more things that the Native America gotta eat. If you wanna go with some of the story, go with the whole thing. That's your history. Can't say they lying and making stuff up. And they didn't want to use the Columbus story as us. It's also part of the history. Gotta take that too. That's the, Amer that's the Native Americans wrote. <laughs> the ancient ones, as they call it. The state history, not noble draw least say about these people's history. That's what they say about it. And that's what you're going with when you go what that shit? Pre-Columbian, hold on, well, pre-Columbian too. <laughs> and expect you to believe they way. And use these terms, try to connect yourself because you think the United States gonna recognize you. Oh, you one of the black Indian tribes. We're gonna give you some money. Yeah, but they want you, you're gonna take all the history too, everything they say about you. Ain't got nothing to do with you. <laughs> take you right up out of it and give them to some other people, these people. And even in this, they showing you that they bringing in cannons, these people living in tents. And all the stuff that we find over here that's advanced, going to get credited to Spain or Portugal or England. Not you. And you're lighting them up too. That's going to be an official story. Saying that they cross ownership and they make sure to put the one more in there because the more is just to be showing too much in American history. So they go try to demonize them and like, yeah, he come with them. He come with them, see? He showed them how to get they gonna demonize as much as possible. But again, I ain't showing you the natives what the Spaniards doing business. And it's been definitely way before this event. 
been already back and forth. Basically, me and man right there, you can probably find history that he is a king from over here. I got a stance on both sides. He ain't ignorant. <laughs> And a lot of these other people could have been different from all and shit too. Your cousins, your uncle who ain't playing with you. You already been at war with them. On this side, they gonna get help from all on the other side on your ass. Like, that more make more sense. See, like this guy of the Mississippi. And it's been drawn in the 1800s after, way after that so called event. So. A lot of shit bullshit. Like that's what you gotta go by. If you're telling people we the Indians can't have half of the history. Take the whole thing. Many American Native American tribes were involved in the French and Indian War. Involved in the fur trade and allied with French forces and British. So well, you know that's the ancient more it's also stole all more history of America, more America. We see that. We don't try to say, oh look, look at the Indians, niggas. Look at these niggas, they they done with them. We ain't saying that. We ain't trying to demonize them. Cause we know that's us. They got a problem faking that shit out. They think we talking about foreign ass niggas from overseas who was smart enough to be sailors and shit to come here and have high reparation and shit like the Spaniards and shit. And this something to the and stuff like that. And uh, for some reason, the reason they just throw in an extrovert nugget into this history, they throw in that in the middle of the fake history to try to justify that shit. King Philip, so he, King Philip now, made a comment, which is probably Muhammad or Muhammad. We know these more up and down the continent have different versions of that shit. The same or different. And again, a lot of them say too, also, but more stealing every brother's history, stealing their history, and shit, because they call them the same thing that they're talking about more instead of Indians, like they calling them. Well, keep your history, New England <laughs> Indians, and shit like that. We just call them the proper term. You use Wikipedia and Google, and that's your gospel. We got our own gospel, which is why our ancestors tell us what it is. That's your gospel, if you want to act like. We talking about different people. And again, it's keep this, keep it. <laughs> don't, don't try to rebut this and say, no, they've been darker. And then we can't say, well, they've been more. <laughs> and it has to be much thicker than the Wikipedia pages giving us. The great laws of Islam, just because you got Islam, Shalom, different versions of this term, Salem, like the area where they at, Salem, Salem, they've been using these ancient terms. Islam is another version that means priest. They ain't use great law of peace as written right here, it's English. <laughs> so we see the first tribe, the Moor Hawk. And I can show you how even many versions of all these terms based off who writing it in their books. All these moors who've been in control and been the family members of the head of the empire that we had in Brazil, they already had that trade popping up and down the continent. Stop playing. The great laws of peace, which at that time been the the most praiseworthy of the laws, like Noah Jolly give you back. Another version of that is the great laws of peace, the Mohammedan law. The most praiseworthy of law, that's what Mohammedan means, of the laws. You see, Kaya, which was one of the names of the most who signed in one of the treaties, Kaya, K A Y A, Nere Kwa. And again, a lot of simulation, a lot of changes happening, even in this time period till now. We're supposed to take all those changes and whitewashing instead of really look deeper. 
he tries huge and he all over the continent and world under different terms. But that's the nations, the six nations who what the United States even based off. You see the great peacemaker, Dekan, Awida. I probably yada AA just dealing with the ancient Islamic slash Hebrewic cultures, Phoenicians and Judeans <laughs> who have always been together in the history books. Later on being on us Moors and Jews. One of the last few terms we see these same ancient people being called before blacks and <laughs> Hebrew Israelites and stuff like that, Indian all the other terms. They know that's the great Muslim. When you go look up Musalim, Musalim, Muslim, it translates as the one who brings peace, which is a peacemaker or a sheriff. And he one who got the badge and when shit go down, he one who come and solve the problem for the people. It's the same thing. The people is, the people is worldwide people. You know, people, local people sending the damn TP, I tell you. They setting up government, how they know all these shit? How you know how to write documents in Latin? They should've been in ancient Latin tongues and been translated into English and adopted as constitution and shit, the whole system. <laughs> they lose all their Moorish titles and shit. They can't English and fall in the God of Europe. They should had a system. And just like how we got Moorish systems all over the world. Established unity and law the league chiefs and the councils of validity, symbolic images. In the Confederacy, they had a, another group who were doing the same thing. Of tribes and nations. You have the league declares the sovereignty, constitutional laws of the Confederacy. Talking about the influence on the United States, which is huge and more than they talking about. But they don't teach about this. They hide this because it's getting too close to the Moorish history. And they reconstruct the shot of it. And act like they were the one who created everything. The United States government only should have been Moorish peoples. Depiction of the Mohawk. Cape. Same little white. Same little type of dress type skirt type gown. That we see, we're gonna keep seeing. The way Carlo Morris saw it. And that's why they've been the Morhawks. We're gonna show you a little bit more about that. Let me see another allegory of America. And this one right here, I see people post this and be like, we ain't no more. So they post this like this. She got her in a, oh, like a, a uh, Empress turban with the pearls on them. They find on plenty more pictures when you go look up more paintings. See the same damn turban on this lady. And we can know we already know the feathers means Moroccan nobility. The more feathers, the longer the records go. You got the third dynasty, the fourth and the fifth. All this been learned by Portugal and Spain and even learn from you. Red cape and a gown that she can rip over her whole thing. And if you take this off now, she's a more in Europe or Africa. Remember that same sandals we've been seeing too? Get deep another Mohawk with the axe, Ashe. Axe mean chief. It's allegorical too. Like how he dressed, I ain't just like the typical Christopher Columbus nigga. In the north, in the north, he's a cold out there, motherfucker. Another more hawk warrior. And mosque is in a painting just like the most on the other side. Always did that without a big heart. Gold plate. Like how a rapper would do when you get a big ass charm, dude. You see these buttons got even faces on them. So you got industry, some kind of mitten process and all that type of shit. Different stories than they give you with the Native American story, right? And see again, same old 
type of script thing, right? And this one right here, you got the look like the oh, the horn that we've been talking about that we've been using to blow to show you the European ships coming into port. <laughs> Come bring your products, buying and selling, civilized already. You see her with the dress on, like the more biters, that red and white stripe. Got the axe again, the axe in there. Axe me and chief. Let's see another one. Got your tobacco pipe and everything. Turbine saw it. You see. People children look like dust. And they look like dust. And shit like that. Got plenty of different more phenotypes. Who might have bleached out and bleached in. So the history get mix up but again the world jolly going through the whole continent and say all the people are muslims he ain't deal with no complexion or none of that he connect you to the flags to the treaties to the land rights and domains and the same thing europe using these fake claims <laughs> we will deal with that too what they what they dealing with Another version of so called Mohawks, and look at this one, you got that purple. <laughs> got crosses on that thing, too. And you know, he died, you know, them were in with the Roman Empire, the Moorish, the same time. Dealing with world trade. But you look at the dress, you got an afro, Susan, they even if they light them up, you still got an afro, all right? You got that robe and everything. Another version. Got the musket. Got that red thing cross. Let's see, like the other moors are on, on these other pins. <coughs> Mohawks. I show you Wi Fi when I search for these Mohawks. I'm not going to do some common sense research into, because you know, of course, aim a call Mohawk. It's like nothing else but call the same thing. You got different perspectives, different people writing these things with different di dialects and different ways they spell them. They got different languages. They got more in every language and different. Got these tribes, they names in every language because they're a worldwide trade. Spelled different that we can't even find them all because we got all we understand of history. When you see even more with that, they would call that African spear and all that type of shit. Got the plume feathers too. Got the gold circle charm too, and the cape, and the same type of skirt type thing. And Taya Deniga, <laughs> call him Deniga, <laughs> and he uh, got some more aspects too, earrings and shit. And these people really think that the Europeans come in and teach them. That's the narrative. So either you got your own or you go with that BS. And I thought this made more clear. But it show you that the Boston Tea Party even use blackface. Why would you do that if these people ain't with dark skin? And they've been on ships and even selling tea all around the world, Asia, all over the place. And even there's some natives who've been like got the same little mask that we see. And the Dogon and all these other so called African tribes, customs over here, and the Native American tribes. Like this, the Western Abenakis must be an Eastern one too, huh? You see how they dress, right? Look, pay attention to this. Let's see that crown. <laughs> Calling G. Calloway. We go Morocco, let me see. Corn thing, same type of shit, shit around our waist, hanging. So these are like in America, early American paintings and pictures. Robes. Jackets, togas. Let me see, same old waistband thing. That crown and all that 
find that all over the West Indies and women today saying that look hair jewelry and crowns and shit. And again, that's another reason why I still know that <laughs> those old maps, climate code maps, more true. Because even today, we subconsciously still call only the islands the West Indies. Because that's been a part of that script. That's been the islands of the Indies that match with the other side. And we call other parts of the continent different things. We see now that show the northern part called Area Asia Superior. And these same people, again, who don't know nothing about more than I something to see. Well, use those maps to say, look, these have been called Asia Superior on their videos. They'd be like, yeah, like, where the rest of us? You're using the same logic I using, but you ain't much want to pay attention to what I say because you got a spell that when you see the word more, you want to cut shot every day off. That's voodoo to you now because of these people who come on here and disavow it every time they get a chance in front of big crowds of moors. You don't see no other people on no other channels. Uh, Groups of people in you know, only North America when you got a lot of black so called dark skinned people in a group and they talking about history. Somebody got got there and tried to survive, make foreign the people who using the term more and don't know shit about it. So, you know, again, you can go to different languages because we all over the world and we speak these and write in these languages. Books are all over and we think European so-called white man write, write all these books and shit right but we see in this one we see um i, I translate them but it still ain't really come out there now we can really see because of the way you got like that you with that stuff on they translated don't pick that up well they don't know what that is and they think some of these is numbers like that oh and these links are like this ain't gonna get picked up so i just say you know i just I'm gonna just show you what then it cause you can still see it. Right. More hawk. More hawk. Not how we saying more hawk. But in this one, do I could have made out what it translated talking about a place called More Hawk. And it's seen like Europe, but again, the whole northern part is connected. And uh you see that's one. I switched this version of them dialectally the say more hawk m o o r h a w k and ain't nothing really pop up like that something pop up but not too much things and right here you see das m o o r so unless they talking about a more so they say more hawk and they capitalize so they ain't talking about a f ship fastening or uh, marsh I'm talking about Dealing with a now, a proper now, in this that teteria, because it's like a form of Latin, just like the rest of these languages, means the third or something. Triteria, you make all good buddies words if you understand language. And that's just one Morak. The standard cipher code of the American Railroad Association, which been the big, some of the biggest reconstructing this, and what people need to really look into, or they want to talk about some a slave man and Rick and what he did to the natives here and all that shit. This right here, changing the riverways and stuff to now land travel and changing the empire. So and they got standard cipher codes that they use certain terms for meanings. But these terms, those terms got other meanings. They take some of your tribal names, some of your old dark your old names that we don't even know we use no more. But we're gonna see a couple that we know about and that is used in a code book. So in this one I see, see all these type of words that they use. Monkey rail. <laughs> so the other, the other Railroad people who got these cold books do not know that we call something a monkey rail, but we're using that term for a uh, purpose. But it's funny, they got more hawk is one of the things that come up, not more hawk. We are even telling people that just means more hawk, they trying to play with us because they became black hawk, like black hawk down. We know they changed more to black 
in a lexicon. See, Morena and all that, Moreland. And it gives a fine Morehawk, M O R E. I switch them many ways. And down there, everywhere I switch, I get some result. Which would make sense because people want to spell these type of things differently because they're going off of phonetics. So they're using the sentence called book and they put Mohawk. They put Mohawk. <laughs> and they also put the Mizonite. They put Moabite. The Moabite King Missouri name is literally Missouri. It's spelled different than the state, but it's phonetically the same thing. I've been a Moabite King of Egypt, even a Moabite baby king of the ancient empire of Egypt, because it's the same people. <laughs> Hiding the history from everybody, cause that's the more, more bite in the same cold book. <laughs> I ain't going through the whole thing, but I got the book and it's very interesting. I'll be looking through and see what else that you see that must spell in Mohawk. So Mohawk in most books in our lexicon, our understanding, subconscious, without the M O O R. It's like Motown records, man. Everybody who. The artist is Moors, <laughs> but since we got Mo Town or Mo City, where we just basically is a town full of Moors, more town. <laughs> like the old books used to call it towns, where we is more towns, but we but we just scratching it because he ain't got O O R for them to see. We just finna see Mohawks, dark skinned people. Islands of Virginia in the West Indies. See the islands of Virginia in the West Indies in that same script. And they're doing treaties with Moors here, known as Indians. They're civilized and these people, they're back and forth. Speaking English. And right here, as to my lands in the Moorhawk, M O R E Hawk. And they even put Moorhawk? Yes, Moorhawk. They're reading these old documents and they're switching that shit to M O R Hawk because they're stealing and they're hiding the shit. When they see more Hawk in America, that, that throwing them off. They say, well, if that's true, then the Columbus shit ain't really true. And these Christians need that to be true because they're stealing the land based off these documents we're going to read in a minute. Another version, more Hawk. And other version on the same page, spelled different, even on this one page, it's crazy. Oh no, this way else on this page, right? you see, the Slavish, the slave districts of the Deutschlands, which is that northern area, you see, even in this book, they call them slavish. Don't try to put that word on us, neither. We did trades, we deal with that shit as the boss. The chiefs of the Cork. Queen, queen, the Kolok Queen, we probably became the Algo Queen, Cold Queen, queen. You can see the Spanish insignia, showing enterprise, empire. They're talking about a lot of stuff in this, and one of the things again they find in this is another version, right there. James Donaldson of Morhawk, <laughs> say endless. Especially with the H because H is silent. So if I can take both of those H off and why I got more rock. And then when you really think about the white, what we saying? We saying more rock. You can try to put an H in there and say more rock if you want. We just break that down to you. And look on this how English even we know we can find the word true father. We look uh, right here. This Macau Lay. So that's like Ali, right? Mak Akar Ali. Look at that. Ali. Ali. Mecca. U Ali. Mu Ali. Or Ule. Different vowels. So ain't nobody can get away from it. We can show all these people what it is. We study. We ain't believing all this. We're going to the books for years. And butter off that 
more gener next generation to add this shit because we scientists in this thing. We gonna compete no us. We ain't gonna just try to beat each other and say, oh, you wrong, you wrong, you wrong. We gonna look into it and see if we got some intelligence in it. And now we learn something. And you see, it's talking about the current bond. Let me say the current bond wax. What we gonna see? What we <laughs> looking at in this? St. Canton? Nope. And another version. We're out the edge. On the beginning, just in the edge. Morocco, can you try to see a little shellfish to resist him? He implored a native woman, then on the way to the shore to collect Morocco, a little shellfish to assist him. So you think he's talking about a real fish? Or they caught and find shit. Look at the transporter from Rome. The Holy Earth. You know about picks and shit like that. Ancient Empire dealing with the northern part of England and shit, right? Here we got silk natives on the east. Going to this painting. But you know we got products like this too. So a lot of the stuff the Indies reach so far across. We got stuff on our side that really probably maybe talk about the other side. We got stuff on this side that could be talking about this side outside of the Lost Fields. And these captions just saying Indies. Don't really mean I like look at this and they got a UFO in it. <laughs> Unidentified flying object in the cock. We've been at it. But again, this looks just like your western ones. Dark skin, feathers, and like we said, this a little different. But this caption is East Indian, so I'm showing you how this an empire. You ain't just here by yourself and saying things, robes and shit too. Woman, it's pretty comfortable to be half naked or whatever in these days. You see, our swords and shit. We got a got Persian rock down there. You can see the building. They don't don't let it twist to these people because they got the clothes on. I mean, they know science and math and fucking numbers and trading with the rest of the world. Some more East Thatcher houses. <laughs> See, the way it is. X. <laughs> the kings, kings of the East Indies. <laughs> we see the same things. And we see that again, the umbrella. And we see in the West Indies one. We see with the turban and the feathers. We see with the circle. Chain. We see the same type of script, type of outfit with the cape. Turbans and shit, but they supposed to be foreign though, because they got an elephant. And they ain't know nothing about the West, any, but they, they ain't the same, right? Because they got a camel though. <laughs> but we see the ships and the walls in the back, allegorical, but worldwide shit. Moles everywhere. Another depiction, this waist. Let me see the same things. Trade and empire. Just that, I mean, you used to been doing the same trade with yourself. You didn't need Rome in the, in the media ship. You've been in Europe. That's the more you're talking about who you're seeing foreigner. That's these people. And it's showing you that they dress differently even in the same photos. And so they got different type of skirt. They got they ain't got the fairly ones, they got different types on this one. Same fairly crown and the same little umbrella shit for the king. See them back there with the gold and shit. All allegorical, we see Spain, allegorical version of Spain, supposed to be European. And that's even allegory. You see, put them on both sides. Your nobility, who had kingdoms on both sides, the Moorish and the European. Rome, even though that in the allegory, that's a Moorish American. 
being that they put them in the allegory of the allegorical moor in Europe that they make called Othello. They know this an American one, so they paint this in the allegorical picture. Like they do all moors when they put them in allegorical pictures as the magi, the three magi kings. Time they play, that's just one more in a historical timeline. Everybody else, Europeans. But uh, you see again with the majesty meanings got some high historic hidden mysterious Egyptian knowledge. <laughs> and he's American. American allegorical Florida, which is allegorical for America, the crocodile and the pirate. And pearls, most likely. Same script. And he got a kid. <laughs> and his turban feathered. On that room. So we got a little bit more information on this. And you see, their children could have gold and silver and precious stones because they've been fucking over the running shit, even though Spain over them. Because the black cause, they wouldn't be able to have none of this shit if they been under that shit. They've been the malls of Spain because they've been on both sides. Try to look like the Spanish influenced them and they dress and everything, but they they the nobles. You ain't becoming noble if you don't know how to read and write. You might not be right. Plenty of languages. Sending their children to Cordoba and shit to go get some knowledge from America. That's how slow they went at us with these fake stories. We tell you we got documents showing why some of the Moorish kings in Brazil. Been saying it more to the east and Africa and Asia and all that to go to school and shit. In 13, 1200 and shit, before we even get to the point where you talk about some <laughs> Moors bringing them over, that means you talk about Moorish Americans, most likely, if they're not a sail here at that time. And again, trying to make it look like, yo, know, even if these the black and nigga, they got the dark skin, they got the, the it's what it's supposed to be as a somebody who Aboriginal, but the Spanish teach them how to wear jewelry and wear the clothes, that's what people be saying. They won't mix the history. Nope, this makes sense of the Moorish Empire, real. that's what makes sense. That they'll be all over in different factions. This is from a book where you talk about American Indians. But they don't use West, they just use Indians. Anybody talking about chocolate making, they're talking about the Indy, the Inda plant. So again, East and West, they're talking about a section of a climatical area where this plant would be ideal to grow in through the whole earth. Most of them want to know where everything been at, so they break things down into that type of shit. In Europe, European use them. And modern day corporation use those maps to see what stuff at. So let's read some stuff about this and we'll go a little bit more, then we'll stop it. The Rosewood. Hold on. Alright. We'll stop this one more time before we go, because again, if I go too long, I'll stop in a minute. I'll be down record for an hour and a half and this shit wouldn't get uploaded. Okay, we're gonna show up again American, what they hiding and why they wanna change things. Because again, they know ain't no such thing as a Native American, Indian, Aboriginal, Indigenous, worldwide presence. That's all after 1492, gotta civilize these people. They ain't got no civilization stories. So they gotta hide the march because you can go in libraries all around the world find that dying these people they must be talking about who call us because it's different they can't make these people uncivilized and that they have to civilize call more so they just get rid of that damn term and demonize it so again the rosewood remember that uh we've been calling one of our communities rosewood and they take from us <laughs> Also from the Indies, 
appears in the tariffs. And again, that neighborhood might have been called Rosewood because our ancient tree, they know they could have come get the Rosewood there and it kept those type of names. That's the place of the Rosewoods and we've been calling it Rosewood. We're dealing with this tree. So it appears in the tariffs. We know that before 1492, we seen Rosewood coming into, into Europe and many other places. We buying this shit. As exclusive to the Canary Islands, so that's where we coming in at, from the Canary Islands. Which also helped us realize that they were calling that the Canary Islands, those Caribbean islands. So appreciated in the marquetry, it owes its name to the smell and color of the wood. It is produced in Brazil and southern Mexico, so that's the way we coming from. Listed as coming from the Canary Islands, but especially in Belize having been the main export of the English colony in the first half of the 20th century. Your empire, your trade, wax, we talked about this in the last video, Berber, or stick, these names change. Yellow, cheaper than white, and multi-use, was only in the port of Safi. So ever you see these Berber wax and sticks in each certain tree, they come from here, and they've been dealing with this tree that they're trying to hide. And uh, again, that's the type of stuff that help us put this shit together. I'm watching what they do. They changed this for the purpose of the hiding it. On purpose they did this. So that means they know. Ain't been no mistake. See, this, in 1602, the Sharif requested a license to send servants to Lisbon. Just like they had to request certain licenses and stuff too to come through these parts without getting shoot at. <laughs> Cause you been running it in your right mind. Looking for rhinestones and to introduce 8, 800 to 1,000 quintal of wax in Spain to amortize travel and acquisitions with the product of its sale. It produced the palm wax, which is raised in Northern Brazil. In the 18th century, Antonio de Ulua, a member of the George Warren expedition, found it in the Amazon fountains, known the palm tree as Palma de Guinea. So that's why they can talk about that like that, because that's supposed to be Africa back then. In his old Spanish book, every time they see Guinea, they want to act like he ain't talk about the American Guinea, even though we got a bunch of that shit over here too. But we ain't abounded in Brazil, be absent from the African Guinea. So she checked that shit out to make sure. All check by yourself. The surname created difficulties for historians. So you see, they had to take the name Guinea out of it. Seeking explanation, they found it wired, picked up by Versimo Serraro. And then that one example, this one example. A thousands of the examples that they take something from America and make it foreign to us because Columbus it shouldn't be here because they in records that predate Columbus ass and the historians who don't know no better they just a story from different time periods after this reset 1492 reset who got the 1492 reset in his subconscious like the people who saying more foreign they got that in his subconscious they constantly reconstructing us to be like this and some people know and they do it on purpose like this group of people who take out the word Ghana from it but this is what this is what happened seeking explanations because they got to explain it shit away they found it where I picked up by Verissimo Sarau found by the discoverers of Africa so when they go in Africa they start taking some of the old American stuff and placing it there. They introduced it to the Indies of Portugal through seeds, extending prodigiously. He disappeared from, it disappeared from its homeland with no possible explanation. So now they could tell you, hey, we can't find it over there. But the story saying they bring it from over there to Portuguese West Indies. So you know that's what Spain, Spain doing this reconstruction. Saying they get it from Guinea, but even though they disappeared, they can't explain that by over here. 
He just it disappeared from the homeland, which is supposed to be African Guinea, with no other possible explanation. Of difficult digesting the assumption, when the wax of this palm was used in the current industry, the problem was corrected by changing the last name to Carnuaba, say the Africa or Guinea wax, just change it to something different that we perceive to be some Native American word now, because he know that's what this damn shit had, ain't even no damn Africa. The name of the port where the sticks wax were shipped. So it is named after the port in America and Brazil. The paper of the Indies, another one she was going in a bunch of these things that they claim Columbus brings seas here. But these things show up in the old books. The paper of the Indies, we talked about that before. Kanye pepper. Also known as pepper or chili pepper in the time of the Catholic monarchs was called Manuetta, as in Portugal, and by deformation, Maligueta. So there's two different versions in different record books. As every, as with every other word, see different spellings. Undisputed to date its American origin. So she's saying, based off her research, it's another thing that been coming but all in Spain and in Europe. Pre-1492 showing the Moorish Empire existed in the West. And these products were being sold in this empire. Prior to the discovery of 1492, as she put in quotes, because that's a BS. And by in the records, it been saying Isabel sent to the parts of Africa and Guinea for slaves go in Malueta, and she's saying they're talking about America before 1492, 1475. So that, that has to be being hidden. <coughs> and again, we see another perceived Indian on these walls. You see these on painted on walls all over Italy and Rome and shit. You see the globe showing that these moles were a white as the big chief. He would have been known as the king of Morocco in Morocco. We see this again serving his uncle, his ambassadors and his ministers. We respect our elders. And you see, again, you got that coat and you see the buttons. When he buy that up now, what well, he is, I'm more from Europe. No. He's saying with the other kings. And they all dress in different customs and they having an international meeting. Grown folks. <laughs> Again, the European Moses, red cape, <laughs> same little outfit, same little band across the waist. So they can try to act all they want. I still can find it, the customs, and even in this. And they got these up in the Library of Congress, just sitting up there. Feel typically like these young children, these moors here. And they got crowns and jewels and shit in there. When that in the Indian story though, they're supposed to be savages. They got the moors wearing the big ass pearl that we see on all these other moors from different parts of the world. How that fit? The big ass ship in the back, showing that this empire is a worldwide empire. It's not savages. When you use these little terms and try to say, oh, the Moors are from over there and we Indians, they, they, they we have to, you can, you can confusing these people. They can be looking into all kind of BS Indian history that ain't gonna be them. They got to dig real deep to find them like this. These Moorish American, I got three plumes showing you he's been the third of the Lord. <laughs> Moorish phenotypically, woolly hair. And you look at his down right here, he look like his, uh, where he can just pull us up over his head. Now you think he's an Arab, because <laughs> he got that right there over his eye. You can see his eyes now. You see that in a lot of paintings. In America, we see they got the little shit around their neck where he look like they just pull up and tighten up. Now they covering their nose and shit, mouth. And we see in these modern Asian shows where they're taking these old books and these documents that we're supposed to be doing, 
putting us three together and they creating shows so their children always know that they us themselves and their own people <laughs> and their own nations have been international and nobles and kings and dukes and generals. Let nobody tell they want us to be gonna make shows and make sure their future continue to know. Because if somebody invade them, they'll be able to give them a new history and everything. It'll be hard to do that to them because of all these type of shows. Mass communication, hegemony, but look what they say. This right here is a modern show, but they're dealing with history, it's a historical drama. So they're talking about 100, 500, 300, 3,000, 5,000, they go out two times and make shows about it. And they play their own parts. But we can see what they say. They say, is that the only former country you know? He said, Arabia. And the way. So they're talking about ancient China. They're talking about Arabia. And we say, merchants from all neighboring countries. You're teaching them. Gather in the city. And that's why we got things like Bangi Jing, because those been our ports that we even having throughout time we do trade with. The nobles and merchants from different parts, especially the western parts of America, these most from going over there setting up things like Al Beijing on our map. But now it's just Beijing and they're hitting on the Muslims now. How to hide that shit. The Chinese. The Europe Roman Christian Chinese. And you got the Moorish Chinese who got the original ancient history. It don't matter how they look, they honor the ancient shit because they know that they're connected to the world empire too. So they gather in the city. Not all of them, he's been trying to tell him, are Arabs. So you know, in this book, or wherever historical document they're getting this from, these so-called Arab merchants, a lot of the modern day people who make these shows direct and stuff, changing terms that got terms that means more and Muslim and stuff like that too. But they're using a modern day cognition Listen, term of that because these merchants' names like Al Mahamit and shit like that. They said that's an Arab. <laughs> but they got their own names that probably similar to more that they just translate as Arab because they got the understanding of that. Europeans do that too. They call it Islamic Empire, the Arabs, and this and that. But we talk about it from our point of view, and that's the Moorish Empire. So that's the book we've been getting this information from. And in this book, we got forbidden passages. I'm about to show you how all more from different parts of the world been inside Andalusia at one point and just stuck these shit. But uh, Muslims in Morocco, Moriscos in colonial Spanish America. This book from Captain Carolyn Cook. And they started drawing. And you see this one say, uh, you look and you see the word Indianish. The term they've been using for moles in America, and you see after that they put Berber, which will show again that South Carolina, but no, they've been talking about when they say the ancient Berbers that they've been talking about, so called African Americans, and people calling themselves black. The ancient Berbers who've been conquered and don't know who they are no more, those are the people who we talking about as Negroes. But the ancient Berbers, they tell you some truth in that. And right here we see them use some Indian Berber. <laughs> Cause that's North Africa at the time, Columbia area. What they call these people, India is that. But again, we see the dawn and the suns. They've been there too, and they've been from both sides too. Just like this person, they one of the people who've been, we see with them feather dress and those old other pic depiction, that's a cooler depiction <clears throat> that's one way more intricate than what we've seen so more other options and different versions you see the different phenotypes and here's the textures and stuff can we talk about moors all over the continent the parrot again to show America allegorical All these, these less ass, these less ass Indians.
We did was a German artist in the when it's 15th century or 1400. Damn, at the service of the Habsburg, yeah, they, they fought back. We dedicated a year painting at the every day of the every day of the people of the territory of Spain, Netherlands, Rosalie, and both Sicilies. And that's a lot of moles who've been in America that time and all over the world, even in Europe and shit. And his drawing, that's why we got them statues all over the world like that. It is just represent those people who've been from America who've been there. And the drawing we see among the paintings, other Spanish people without any reference to otherness. So called black people, dark skinned people, moles, and mariscos. He also painted Aztecs, brought from so called New Spain to the royal court. Is America. They also saw the first images of some of the first images of the Aztec people drawn. So, Cabo Bolchador became Gracias de Dios in the record books. And we're going to read that in a minute. So, we will get into this book. We are going to read some stuff from it, but. She been one of few in the world who really didn't tell the truth. As far as we know it. And she had to rebut she had to rebut the, all the spells. She had to rebut the so called uh, twenty thousand year old barren screen. So he said hey, these people have been back and forth on the other side. These people have been Asians. That's how they look. And they've been coming through ship and doing other time periods in different um ways they were coming some as captives and some on their own ships and stuff like that and relative even in one general story because she said basically which is common sense why would these people leave the plush lands of the siberian steppes where they got food and they got ways they can plant in plush land and go spend all these years in beringia stuck between ice caps starving because they can't plant just to find, oh, now we got new plush land over there with the buffalo. And now we back into more plush land from the tundra down to America. She said, a lot of that shit make no sense. So she rebut that, then she hook up, she tell her best research into the transatlantic slave story. That's the second chapter. She put Los Negros, the blacks. So she had to explain that in that mentality. And at the end of this, uh, probably gonna be a just part series. Series, and uh, I can read from that chapter. And she also basically the whole book we bought in the Columbus 1492 story, because she's telling you and draw the maps. That's why she's showing the map to show Morocco at all conference research. Thirty years of her life. But she got these type of documents, the old shit, the backer. All these people with the other theories about this history don't got no records that go back in that time. It's got a bunch of modern day ass reconstructed stories. And they're scared of going to this because they're going to flip their upside down. They won't keep the same understandings. And another thing. We call, they call us African Americans. Her book is titled Africa versus America. All people on the side of the world who call themselves that need this book in their household. It's definitely talking about your history on both sides of that damn ocean. You can see, they Toledo. We're going to talk about the Toledos over there and over here who are part of this family who have been definitely She get a lot of these records from her own family. Nobles who had their own versions of the history and they should tell a different story. She using those documents. We got the Irish Times. We talk about some of this too. So again, just Moors who saying a lot of shit is different. They ain't explaining it like you, but ain't not everybody believing this bullshit. There's some way from Sao Paulo writing this too. Irish for the Irish newspaper, Irish Times. And they showed the original map too. We got this covering up. This ain't really covered up. This is lands known already by Columbus and them. They only had a Spanish port, but they had not had an idea of this. But you see, they got their flag in these ports because they got business dealing with 
these ports. They ain't got no name yet because they ain't registered. You see, the Ethiopian Sea. Because both sides was known as Ethiopia. And you don't see really too much names over here like Ghana and Ghana yet on this map because it's not that been existed yet. We still had the ancient kingdoms of Ghana on the Moorish maps and all that hey. Ethiopia on both sides. Ethiopia is supposed to be right here and our modern maps so why are you doing right here? They're telling you stuff different from these modern maps. And it's the mayor of the sea of Jubico. <laughs> or Utico. Different names of the seas. Piece of king names and shit. But look now, ships in the sea. They will act like they don't want to be shipping around. Oh, you've been the last one shipping around this man. Look, a different Spanish so called versions of the flag. Every Irish person know of St. Brandon, discovered the Americas almost a full millennia before 1490, Crystal Columbus. So everybody can create their own alternate versions. But we can, right? And he said, maybe canaries. Couldn't he get closer to the truth that it was a canary, but we just call that over here. And Gazoles put places name over here, and Madeira. We still got the Madeira River today in South America to prove that. But then you get into even deeper claims made for Phoenicians, Japanese. We got a lot of stories of these trades around the world. You see the bass. They got a lot of different stuff too in their records. And then, yeah, of course, they're going to act like some of this right here you can just check off as crackpot theories but uh, yeah you may have some even some that i say might be erroneous but the amount showed that all the shit ain't damn erroneous ain't damn ain't erroneous but in stuff that always gonna be fine they're gonna shake up a narrative these three narratives resets it constantly will be new stuff out and stuff could get thrown away when they don't fit those narratives and stuff gonna be put in the crackpot theory myth sections and theory sections when they could be right or wrong. And he also bring this up because everybody knows this and he used this, the claims he makes for the Arabs of Andalusia rests heavily on the work of one of the more colorful historians. See, you gotta be colorful because of that book she write that I showed you earlier. She gotta be colorful because she mentioned the forbidden word more and give you all that power. So these dogs can people around the goddamn world, and even from America. It's like no draw lady, she did the same thing. She take no she take that shot of forty eight and put a pound of evidence to prove that shit. In modern time, 1300, 1492, she even take them back to the ancient empire of Egypt, bring them straight through the ancient Israelite empires that were connected with Solomon and Haram, the most and Jews from that ancient biblical times that had kingdoms on both sides. So we see you, Judah and West Africa. So she know that, and she didn't even use that as proof. She got other evidence that showed that these ancient Phoenicians set up kingdoms, plenty seaports all over Europe and all over the Americas and had trade popping. And she was known as, and you see her family been known as Mara, which is feminine for Moorish women. And she deep into it. And she was known as the Red Duchess. They call her that because she been going against what Rome and want her to do. She been right, she been Spain, right? So she supposed to be hiding us. But she, they don't know she been Morris, they had Morris in their family, they converted. So she would come back and tell the truth. She'd been jailed and exiled. She opposed the Franco regime. And he tried to give her hell. He tried to make it look like, oh, they just been giving her hell because she'd been LGBTQ in a time where they'd been, wasn't popping and accepted. No, they've been using that. 
Let's see, because they want to excommunicate her ass and hide her book and shit. Take her years. She finished the book like around the 1990s and she published that shit to 2000, but trying their best not to get them published. Take some some Muslims who has the means of publishing company in Spain who wanted to take that job to do it, to take that, because it could be backlash. She might have been people who want to do you in for her. They had one author who just take her books, doing the same thing you doing, take her book and the information she dropped the data and try to write his own book and in his interview he said he began death threat and shit too she said that too in one of her interview they ain't play with me yet though but at but this the early 2099 shit when it, all these authors writing about us a lot of years gone by and from that time and now so it probably was more volatile back then because we we ain't been as woke as we is now about this information and mass like this we us today in America. Carry to you now, you know, boy won't talk about this shit now, now though. And he said this a Saudi Arabian filmmaker Khalid Abulakir had produced a documentary We Discover America before Columbus. So he talk about Arabs. So he connecting himself to that ancient word and all that stuff too. Because the documents saying these things. I can show you how we can call ourselves these terms because he mean things to ancient words. That the whole world I know. So that explores the likelihood that the Arabs of Andalus and the Muslim kingdoms of Mali. So you see connect the Sub Saharan and West Africa, Moors in Andalusia, with Moors in America, just like the book doing. In his documentary and different other shit that ain't even that she ain't even that we got plenty of other shit but thanks to her we could either find much much more shit because she put a lot of shit in context for us she was also heiress to one of the most extensive private archives in europe and her research in these documents convinced her that the arabs of Al-Dalus, modern day andalusia and Morocco had discovered and made frequent trips to the northern half of South America. And he way more than that. He just giving you a synopsis of what a book about the second one, because she not dropped another one. She claimed to have found references in the archives to indigenous American plants such as maize and pepper long before 1492. And again, she getting records from the contract house of the Indies and the Portugal Indies contract houses so the way he writing the way this person writing is as of he don't believe it but that's what she's saying <laughs> before her death in 2008 the doctors produced two books detailing the, her thesis the first it was in us showing that basically in her theory after all the research she believed Moorish Americans throughout time been bringing different concepts, customs, languages, things that we think is foreign, like the word more, <laughs> plenty different things into the, the eastern parts of the world and back and forth for a long time. But the world believes Spain opened up European, the first to open up discovery from Europeans and everybody take Everything that people do in the Africa, Asia, Southeast Asia, and Americas has either brought it by Europeans and influenced by somebody from the eastern half of the world and take all our history and throw it away and say somebody from the eastern brain to us. So she be about that and say, no, we most likely reciprocal common sense will say, yeah, that's where you have to be. It's reciprocal today. It was provocatively published to coincide with the 500th anniversary of the Columbus first journey. <laughs> so she did that there on that day. We bought that boy on his 500 year. Y'all lying ass for all these years. <laughs> Here's a book. So the second possible pre-Columbian Muslim contract is explored by Dr. Abu Al-Kair involves the adventures of the even more colorful caribou. So he even more something that he's saying colorful like it's amazing ends up in that we should take too serious but mythic type shit 
Abu Bakar the Massa, Musa King of Mali. His realm covered most of the West African and held a large gold deposit because he already had the gold mine. The same one Portugal and Spain were fighting for. And he been on both sides. It recorded that he did not he did not believe that it was possible to reach the extremity of the ocean that encircles the earth. And around 1311, he handed over the throne to his brother and set out to explore the Atlantic Ocean. And he's the modern day rendition of this. And he liked to act like that's been the only more, okay, we got one African group of people who come. That's been just a continuation of that same trade back and forth. And it's the stories that get out. And we're going to be discovering much more of these if we open up our mind. These are some of the stuff that get through. And have fleets. The fact that they're showing you that these people have fleets and shit, they ain't damn sure even sitting on the course. The fact that the kingdom always posi positioned on that west coast of Africa because they show you that these people collect creating seaports. They own the sea for a reason. The, the initiate trade and sea travel. They just create shit by the water because they like beaches. So they get into this and they say the influence of Brazil, the fact that she telling us even this director know he probably ain't read the whole book. He probably taking what he want out the book, and they don't put the shit together properly. As you see, it only just had to be because the Moors of West Africa who had Islamic cultures like Mali Empire going over there that one damn event. That's the empire, and that been the head of the empire. She specifically said that multiple times in the book. Every time she said Morocco, and when she said the head of the kingdom, she talking about where the seat been at that controlled the entire empire of the world at that time was the northeastern part of Brazil. So by they saying, they say around the state of Bahia, they were Muslim influenced long thought who have been brought over with Africa slave, which is a lot of more say too. Every time you present this in America, Moorish Americans, of the noble Drali fifth stole. See, he said in the shit, the North Central and South America and the islands as part of the Mayans and the habitation. He and his family like the Duchess to give you that. In 1312, they came Morocco and Brazil. He ain't did all that. But she showing you that's what he talking about and they true. And they've been Moors. And they always, the way, every time they find anything Islamic over here, all oh, African Muslim bring that. That's what they're going to say. Non-learned men always speak like that. You don't get into details like intellectuals would do and look at the theories and put two and two together. So we're going to end it after this. So that's the story. That's the truth. That's why Europeans over here and all over Africa and claiming it because they're claiming more stuff and it been written at Rome. The 1492, there's ain't been no people just decide to go over the Atlantic and find shit and shit based off these documents. Doom de versus stuff that you forget how to write. You'll be writing these writs and these things. Like I was talking about earlier, these videos is writs and stuff for the future. Thus, but for the future of Romans, for them to be able to operate in Moorish kingdoms and how to operate along as you ain't dealing with the true history. If you get the people to be anything else that's officially at Rome land for any Christian nation to do what as please and do what the people as please. It should written in these. So it down to verses say doom the verses. The papal vote issued on 18 June 1452 by Pope Nicholas the Fifth. It authorized Alfonso the Fifth of Portugal to conquer Saracens and the pagans. So they're talking about Moors, even if they call themselves stuff, other stuff and shit too, right? Just to cover that and co sign them to perpetual servitude. So stealing the Moors Empire, rehiding it, and everything they can do to 
it's the only basis of discovery so basically if we rebut the columbus and those other fake histories and stuff we're taking this fake imperialism from them and giving it back to you with the real is the Moorish empire just the sto the stealing of that you see he extended to the americas in 1493 with the intercaterra and he already extended to the americas he just and extend to what we known as the america because again after 1492 now america can all of a sudden pop up in the world play the other half of the world now known so they put that in there but all us been talking about the malls in america who been coming over there kicking their asses all the time they get tired shit and say listen all christian nations <laughs> we need soldiers we need ships if you got ships and you're ready to go we're going to Alende Mar. Alende Mar, we're going on a crusade against these Moors and Jews across that ocean. And cause stuff like this, 1452, no jolly talk about this too. This all dealing with the American conquest. Tom Donzo V, you see. And they use Turks a lot. In these stories, when they were talking about Moors, they just say Turks. They tried to put some Eastern into it because he's 1453 and he got Constantinople and all these things. But this just leading up until 1492 and stuff still going on over here. Look at that French and England, right? But New France and New England and all that over there, you see even Africa. You see Portuguese in the story. You see Portugal, Turks. <laughs> Everything that we see in America, Byzantine languages, the Amer, A M E R version is Byzantine version of that A M I R. We got Spain, we got the Islamic strongholds of Iberia, all this in the same story. And we got Ottomans. And just in one place. Don't let them cut off the other half of the world because these terms supposedly foreign you see some more this history I have Lonzo V and an attack on Morocco on 1450 they talk about America pre-1492 the leading up to that she read all this in her book but this is the Wikipedia version of how they hiding it a conquest a reconquest taking Moorish kingdoms Created captives on both sides, ransoms and slaves on both sides. The Portuguese crown extended to North Africa and America with the attack on Keuda. So they've been dealing with, again, the ports on that side that the, the Moors on this side had on two sides. They've been attacking both sides of that shit. The Moors of Granada who've been in Colombia had ports in Granada. And New Granada and Granada, and they have been at war on both sides with these Moors. They say from sea to sea. And see another attack, 1441, we know in her book, that's the Mauritania that became Argentina. Or that's the Mauritania that the land of Moors in the northern part of, north part of America, South America. The 1441 event that they even put the date as the beginning of the African slave trade with that date in that event. They put it in. And then the crazy shit about this this attack on Mauritania by Portugal, but in 1441, they in Guinea. So, you know, the Mauritania, what you believe, is the one that's next to Guinea. Exactly, that's, the, that's what that is. And then that's when they bring them to America. So you see Mauritania right there, and Guinea right there, we get into the green. That's what I focus on this Wikipedia page talking about that. <laughs> Not what we talking about. <laughs> Showing you how the trick though. To confirm the Portuguese trade rights, King and the Portuguese, they come from the old Templars who those um old crypto Jews and Christians who been under Moorish rule and customs soon. The go between between us and the Moor the Roman Empire. We were 
blocking people, but we still we still tree had to still go on. So we had our vassals who went Templars, and that's why when they try to persecute the Templars, they try to make the new world. They have to get rid of people who know about the shit, stealing their rights and stuff too. But the Portuguese continue rocking as Portuguese, giving the old knights Templars who who had know about the shit. Some of them, some of them in Moors from the area and shit like that too. And again, the ball 1452, conquer and subjugate the Saracen and pagans. But then where they put kingdoms, duchies, counties, principalities, and other property, which they don't put in the Indian history. This is supposed to be not in, Indi not in America because Saracen and pagans, not Indians. But we just show you this is talking about America before 1492. And again, Indians ain't been, they've been, they've been uncivilized, so they should have kingdoms and duchies. They should take more science, inner and outer sciences, to even get these type of things. You ain't got these shit now. The people who play guys more is right these type of things, counties and principalities. So they had counts, more titles they get take from you, kings, counts, dukes, and princes. Cause you got a new history now, you don't need those titles, right? Lose your nationality. Through lack of knowledge of this history, Wilm Groom finds student diversity is essentially geographically unlimited. Of course, it's anywhere where Moorish kingdoms at. And, and, and definitely if they don't know who they are, like they come back later and go into Africa with these same documents. And cause they call this of Africa, they ain't connect this up back to that ancient empire, okay. Now we're going to claim that shit. And they're going to scramble for Africa. That been wrong. Going back again and do the same things that they did in America. Claim through these papal bows. And see, they make sure they make you keep them in West Africa and away from America. We know goddamn well Portugal been everywhere too. But they don't like the Portugal records because they got too much of the old real shit that we've been doing. It makes us what they versions of the shit. They used to call it sports and shit. The same thing we used to call it. Spell a little different. Oh, that's what we call them, right? <laughs> now that's three lettered with shit like that. And then he's became more into Katera. And then they, see how they say them, don't be confused with the one with the 1493 even though that's the same document is update them to do the discovery thing the ball reaffirmed the earlier bows yep because these been bows against alan mar the most in the atlantic on both sides of it taking that empire thank you but recognized portugal rights to territories it has discovered along the west coast of Africa and America for Spain and Portugal. It's the reductions of the infidel of the Moors and other non-Christian territories, which is any other terms we use in these days, they definitely claiming that. But the Moors one, they saying they're the ones who ain't faithful to our shit, they enemies. I'd rather be that than a vassal. I, I'm intelligent who don't know who he is, but ain't up automatically vassals just because of that. So I'm gonna beat them all and put them in their face and clean my shit. These motherfucking nice and crazy ain't far chasing you around no more. Back in the day, you had run up on one of them, they see them more and they see each other. Oh, God, put your sword. <laughs> Nowadays, people so ignorant, they ain't know who is who. Ain't, ain't nobody fighting you. Clean your shit. That's what he been expressed in chapter 4 here, and he's showing you who's stealing and they stealing, but you're still saying more of the sound. Rome stole the day. King of Fonzo. Now you know how the Fonzos, they say the King of Fonzo in West Africa, right? You see, Ghania, the shore, the southern shore of Ghania, be vested with the Order of Christ, the successor organization of the Knights Templar. 
again, connecting us with the be really in the hands of the Saracens. And again, these Knights of Templar, Knights of Christ, these doing business with Mars for the most part. And we told Isabella decided to change it to a new world, that way they have to change things. And then the Mars who start forgetting the Mars, you think the Knights of Templar and Christ ain't ticked the whole organization when you forget? Yeah, all right. They were doing better than what you for, for years, and then all of a sudden you call yourself something else and ain't know who you was. They gonna convert somebody else from that area and have them do the business on that side, but they gonna collect the tax and act like they the state overseas empire now, Portuguese overseas kingdoms. You forget, not them. Some her story of view these both together as extending the theologically, which is theologic logical, which is again divine, dealing with those things we can't see, religious type things. So Christianity, legacy of the Pope Urban the Second Crusades. That's what he should be no damn discovery. It's a war against Moors and Turks. <laughs> but again they use Turks to keep away from using the word more. In her book, she explained us too, and the exact groups, kings that have been in the Ottoman Empire and their connection with the Moors in America, different kings. The 1686 Holy Office limited the bow by the queen that African enslaved by unjust war should be freed. So that's for both sides. You have Moors who've been in the Holy Roman Empire who will be getting these things done for you under terms at later like damn they ain't got us they ain't calling themselves Moors but they stole us to the mass pagans and stuff he stole they still been trying to help by going and letting people know who they really is these thieving motherfuckers condemn unjust enslavement of non-Christians and sublimus dei another writ that you forget how to write. So you see all the boats that come connected. You see the timelines. The natives of Valencia issued a series of bow, limited Portuguese power in favor of that of Spain. So Rome still controlling these things from Italy and Rome. You see Rome's connected with the age of discovery. You can't get around it. I had been supposed to start this video, but um, I bet I put the readers because this is what I map I show you what Cap Borgador is. Greek Yos de Dios been registered from by Columbus, and that's the evidence. Before 1430, the Cape of Nam of the Shinari of Hanon. So that's showing you. Ancient Phoenician, ancient Carthaginian, that's on the, the American side, like I say, Judean. The Kingdom of Jude, but on one side, so you got the same empire on the other side, too. And we, Canaria, which looks like the land of Kuana, or Kana, or Canaan, because you know the ancient Hannibal, no boy, no, they've been still Canaan, because like, they still had their history intact. Nobles keep this to me intact. And he had, uh, and you see, we Ghana also sound like coming from that Kuana Aria. Aria is the land of the version of the land of the connected to that version of Latin. So the Kanar is by itself the land of Kanar. And uh, we see tons. Just because he got a G now, we, we can see it's the land of Ghana, or Ghana, or Ghana. You see the, the Guana. And this way, look at this. You see it on both sides. You see Guana, Guana, Timmy, and Grand Canary on this side, too. And the plenty of Guana over here, the man who received Columbus name, Guana Creelo.
So watch this ideal border. We separated the canary from the kingdom of Fez in the beginning of the mark of Guinea. In the history like this, we see the language all over the place of hand on the navigator. Especially in Boston. <laughs> but they won't say that I ain't real, okay? That's a different source that ain't even used that in connecting this to America. And um you see terms like Kingdom of Fans being used for America and marks been used in ancient times and we got plenty of words to say come mark in America. She said that's the marks that they've been had since the days of Carthage and Rome. If I march in Europe, this is that same term. See I've been here in the land of blacks, she said I've been being used to Arabic Negroes. We wouldn't know where the non was. We would not know where the non was. Otherwise, Columbus has told Bernard this, this recorded, that being, because she ain't going to make no opinion in this book that coming out of her ass. It going to be something that she showing you come from somewhere. Right or wrong, it come from somewhere, not her just her <laughs> making up shit. See, that being to the west of Cuba, the Cubans place non to the west of the island. So, the people here at the time of 1492 still were calling it ancient Nam that been run under maybe on Carthage. Ain't never stopped being that. It's like Carthage ain't never stopped existing. We just call them Origin Empire later. And before Carthage, em Carthage any empire, but the Venetian Empire, and before that, the Egyptian Empire. So we can trace that back and know that's Moors and that's our ancestors. Once the Canary Islands were awarded to Castillo over there with the obligation to convert the natives, Pope Eugene IV transferred the Cape border to that of Borgador. So when they get those little islands, they start moving names and stuff, right? Those of the Algarve, which means the West and your old Arabic type Latin. Pass from the islands and Cape Verde to the Indies. Been hopping over shit. Say, dividing the two islands of San Miguel de la Palma, the north was called Palma and the south called San Miguel. Reuniting with by Lugo, remember we talked about this through the law, even the original conqueror. You want about Columbus. Lugo was the dude you need to go look into, but again, Got too much more shit in this history. <laughs> it was renamed San Miguel de la Palma, Columbus Pit Capro, Copro, Bolgador as Gracios de Dios, which is translated as Thank God in English. To the south, you enter Tierra de Canaria, the land of the Canary, or Canaria, like the ancient word up here. They still been using until they changed it, throw that away. Try to make a new world. In the middle of the 16th century, Costa Rica continued to be called the Canary Islands, 1500s. And the uh, natives been still called Carthaginians because they know they've been in the ancient western part of the ancient Carthage. Most of them know that too. They've been still here right as that. Just, just passed down in their family line. And that's why Morocco been still on the coast. But uh, we're going to start right there. And uh, we just read about Gracios e Dios, which we see the other day. That means, thank God, the corporal, which is the apartment. And that split where you got the canal at, the canal that split the two, she talked about that. Why that happened to split back then, even in two parts? They ain't even just make that up nicely with the little canal stories that they going down there and create a split in that. That part of the history, they probably been going to help reconstruct that motherfucking history. Because this is where he's about to come out. This is where he's about to come out. <laughs> and talk about that. <laughs> and even call these by the Knights of Christ, Portugal, and Spain. You had your own Moorish names too. From the maps in the vault somewhere in the Vatican. So peace till next time.